Hi, I'm Joe Wilkins, and this is Catching Skills and Drills Basics. Easy size. First thing I want to talk about is the stance. Now when we talk about stances, there are three basic types of stances. There's our sign giving stance, okay? There's our primary stance with nobody on base, and there's our secondary stance when we have runners on base. Now the first stance I want to talk about is the sign giving stance. The important thing here is to give your sign to the pitcher and the middle infielders only to block the third base coach and the first base coach. Now how we do that is we put our glove on the outside front of the knee, we pinch our knee in here and we give our sign deep. Notice my heels and feet are together. My hand is deep in the pocket here so that only my middle infielders and pitchers can see the sign. Now it's important when you're giving your signs that you give clear easy signs for your pitcher to understand. You don't want to have half fingers or quick fingers so that your pitcher gets confused. Remember, the important part here is to make sure that he knows what he's throwing and where he's throwing it. Okay, now that we've given our sign, we want to talk about how we're going to get to our primary or secondary stance. Now there's a couple ways that you can get to your stances, either by walking into it, which is a more controlled style, or hopping into it, which is more advanced for when teams start picking up location if you're setting up too early. Okay, now that I've gotten myself to my primary stance, I want to think about being able to do two things. I want to receive the ball well from my pitcher, and I still want to be able to block the ball in the dirt. The reason I want to be able to block the ball from my primary stance, even if there's nobody on base, is so that I develop a good confidence that my pitcher can trust me when there are runners on base, and so that I keep the ball off the umpire and I develop that good relationship with him. Now that we've talked about what we need to do from the primary stance, I want to talk about how the primary stance should look. First of all, I want my feet slightly wider than my knees. As you see here, my weight will be shifted to the inside part of that foot so that if I have to block to the left, I can push off with that right foot. If I have to block to the right, I can push off with the left foot. If the ball misses its spot and I have to push off and get my glove to the spot, I can push off with my left foot and still balance myself with this right leg. Vice versa, if the ball misses the spot this way, I can push off with my right foot, still balancing with my left foot, and catch the ball without falling over. Okay, now that we've talked about foot positioning, now I want to move to talk about where the butt should be so the body positioning is correct. I don't want my butt to sag down low too much because what that does is put my elbow in a position where I have to work around the knee to catch the ball. What I want is my butt up in the air just enough, and my hips back just enough so that my elbow can get out in front of the knee so I have freedom out here for the glove to go anywhere it wants to go. Okay, now that we've talked about foot positioning and butt positioning and why that's important, let's talk about the arm positioning. Obviously, we talked about the elbow being out in front of the knee for freedom of the glove. Your bare hand should be relaxed behind your foot, not behind your back because that's too far around to get to block, but relaxed behind the foot and your legs should be flexed and your whole upper half of your body should be relaxed. What we talk about here is a flexed lower and relaxed upper. Okay, now that we've talked about the primary stance, I want to talk about the secondary stance. The big part about the secondary stance that's different from that primary stance is this arm right here. The legs are still flexed just like they were in the primary stance. The gloves out in front here. But this arm is out in front in no man's land. I don't want to touch the glove. I don't want it touching the chest. I want it out here, soft close fist around the thumb, elbow square, knee square, shoulder square, just like this. So that if I do have to make a throw, if a runner's stealing, I can transfer and throw with no wasted motion.
we talk about our stances, we want to talk about balance and we also want to talk about foot speed. Now what I have here is two tires. One's made for balance and stamina and one's made for foot speed and agility. And we have to incorporate both into our stance drills. Now what I have here is a normal size tire, an everyday tire, and what we're going to use this for is for stamina and balance. I'm going to set this tire right on the ground here step on the tire so that I'm forced to balance and I can do different sets and different reps and different timing here and I can also do my receiving drills from the tire. It forces me to balance, it works on my leg strength and stamina. Now what I have here is a motorcycle tire. As you can see it's got a little bit bigger inner circle. That way I can work on my foot speed and agility. I set the tire down, I get in my primary stance and I go back and forth in my primary stance to work on setting up late. I can also do my secondary stance the same way. Back and forth. Now, whether I'm working with or without the tire, I still want to focus on giving a target every time I get to a stance. Whether it's primary stance or secondary stance, I'm still flashing a target. The motto I want to teach you is target, relax, adjust when catching a pitch. And we'll talk about that a little later when we talk about receiving.